The end of the third millennium BCE in Mesopotamia witnessed the emergence of the first large kingdoms. This period was characterized by a centralization and organization of power. Two main kingdoms appeared one after the other. The Akkadian Empire, whose center was in northern Mesopotamia, flourished during the 24th and 23rd centuries BCE. During the 21st century BCE, a Sumerian kingdom rose whose capital was in the south. The founder of the Akkadian Empire was King Sargon, also known as Sargon the Great. Sargon chose the city of Akkad as his capital. The exact location of this important ancient city is unknown, but we do know that it was in northern Mesopotamia. Sargon built a large and organized army. In his royal inscriptions, he describes the military operations accomplished by this army. The large kingdom required an improvement of the bureaucratic methods. For the first time, uniform measurements and weights were established. The years were marked by fixed year names determined by the palace and used throughout the empire. The kingdom's scribes adopted new patterns of writing. The language of writing was unified. Prior to the Akkadian Empire, most of the texts in Mesopotamia were written in Sumerian. Now, the empire's formal language became Akkadian. In fact, the name of the language Akkadian is derived from the city of Akkad, the first important center of Akkadian speakers. Cuneiform script, originally developed to write Sumerian, was adapted to the Akkadian language, which now became the language of official documents and royal inscriptions. At its peak, the Akkadian Empire ruled over all of Mesopotamia. The dynasty's kings described themselves as the kings of the four corners of earth, or in other words, kings of the entire universe. Some of them even portrayed themselves as gods. Art and literature also developed greatly. However, a combination of internal rebellions and external threats brought the Akkadian kingdom to an end. This destruction occurred during the days of the king Shar Kalishari. The Akkadian meaning of this name is king of all kings. Approximately 40 years after the fall of the Akkadian Empire, a new large kingdom arose in Mesopotamia, the kingdom of the third dynasty of Ur, or in short, Ur III, named after the royal dynasty that ruled the empire. The center of the new empire was the city of Ur in southern Mesopotamia. Its founder, King ur -Namu, led it as he ruled over all of Mesopotamia. He thus referred to himself as the king of Sumer and Akkad. The empire's formal language was Sumerian. It developed a sophisticated bureaucracy that enabled it to rule for longer than its predecessor. The short period around the turn of the, the 20th, 21st century BC uh, was a period of enormous bureaucratic activity. So we have an early kind of empire, a number of large institutions, generating vast quantities of documentation. So we have something like, um, I don't know, 100, 150,000 documents from a very short window of time, maximum 100 years. In fact, most of them really within not much more than a generation. It's an incredible flourishing of activity. And they record in, in great detail the comings and goings of commodities and products and people doing various jobs, textile production, whatever. So you can actually reconstruct through those tablets a lot about the economy, the ancient economy, and the, the way the social system works. And it's really, it's incredible for, from such a distant part of history, you can say a lot about what was going on in the world through this incredible rich documentation. An important characteristic of this period is the great wealth of texts that document many aspects of life in the empire. Today, we have tens of thousands of texts from the Ur III period, and some of them are still being deciphered. Schools for scribes were established throughout the kingdom. These schools became the main centers for the development and distribution of literature. New genres appeared in Mesopotamia, 
the first royal hymns, that is, poetic texts praising the king and his virtues. We also find in this period the first law code, a collection of laws regarding civil and criminal law. This law code is ascribed to the founder of the dynasty, Urnamu. We will discuss it later in this course in our lesson on legal literature. The Ur III rulers were responsible for grand construction projects, including the sacred building known as the Ziggurat in the city of Ur. We shall discuss Ziggurats and their relation to the biblical stories in the lesson on the Tower of Babel. In the year 2004 BCE, the kingdom of Ur was destroyed as a result of an attack by the kingdom of Elam and nomadic tribes of Amorite origin. The destruction, which marked the end of the flourishing of Sumerian culture, was commemorated in five large literary laments that document the catastrophe.